Hey there, everybody. I hope you are all doing really, really, really well. Uh, I'm going to be fiddling with this microphone over the course of the evening. I don't know if you caught my video. I, what was it? I did it yesterday or today. I, I can't remember when it came out. But my beard decided it was going to become a character. And so as I was speaking, it kept, my beard kept sort of brushing up against the microphone because it was lower than I was. And I could hear it in the, I could hear it in the feedback. So, um, trying something a little bit different. I've been, anyway, my experiment tonight is I set up this microphone arm. Hopefully it'll all work out really well. But with all that being said, it is really good to see you all. Uh, it's good to be here with you. It is great to be here with you. I love being here with you. You folks are incredible and amazing, and I am so blessed to be in your company. Steph is here. Hello, Ed and all Church Without Walls. I'm so grateful to have this lovely place, Steph says, to visit uh, on night between Saturday and Sunday. It's such an amazing place, so crowded with kind, loving people. You are the best. Amen to that, Steph. And uh, Canadian Anglican is here. Hey, my friends. Hey, Canadian Anglican. Tenny is here. Hello, all. And Josh is here from cloudy Vancouver, Washington. Mr. Roro Suri is here. Good evening. Good evening to you. And SC is here. Good morning, Steph and all. Amen. Hani is here from... Hani is here from Idaho. Good, good to see you, Ani, uh, Hani. And Awen and Hammer is here. Well, howdy there, church, internet church. It's me again. Stay awesome, Duncan. That's right. Hey, Duncan. Hey, Ava Lynn. Hello, everybody out there. Um, yeah, it's just great to be in your presence. Uh, Mary Pose is here from Pittsburgh. Uh, Velo Stigmat. Uh, hello to everyone from the spice aisle of my grocery store. I missed this last week so much. That's awesome. Thanks for being here. And uh, Kale, oh gosh, uh, yeah, Kale Ara, Kale Ara, Kale Ara. Uh, hello, hello to you. And Walt now, Pig Pig, hello Reverend Ed, and hello to all of you. Amen. Folk of the Forest is here. Dre Light Rider is here. Call him as I see him is here. And Michael Dunnigan is here. Good to see you all. Uh, Chris Henderson from Arkansas is here. Omar is here from the planet Earth and other parts unknown. Love and peace to all. Huckleberry Pork Chop Calhoun Shoal is here. <laughs> Hi, all. I think we'll just call you Huckleberry for tonight, if that's okay with you. Oscar is here. Hello, Church Without Walls family. God bless. Glad to be here. Amen to that. And Mimi is here. Julia is here. Midnight Man is here. Hello, uh, Duncan. Hey, Duncan. Hello, Ava Lynn and all. How y'all doing? Amen. Uh, sea Wolf Blue is here. Hello, everyone. So nice to be here with you all. So nice for you to be here. And Sabrina is here. Hi, Church Without Walls. Hi, Duncan. Hi, Ava Lynn. It's windy in New Jersey. Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday to you. Dr. Smith is here. Prayer request for whatever the hell is happening in Israel right now. Yeah. Um, I haven't caught the news tonight, but today it sounds, it just sounds like things are heating up. I know, I think it was yesterday. I think it was yesterday that uh, the some uh, communities in the West Bank were overrun by, by Israeli settlers and, and there were some deaths. Uh, some Palestinians were killed. Um, and fires were set, some homes were lost. Yeah. Thank you, DR Smith, for bringing that up. Uh, Derriere is here. Hello, all. And Decoy Tigerpaw. Hello, everyone. I'm here from Virtual World of SL. Good to see you, Decoy Tigerpaw. Thanks for being here. Chris J is here. Hello, Reverend Ed and Church Without Walls family. Alwyn and Hammer is here. Uh, Alwyn and Hammer is here. Well, sorry. I, you know what? It just did that thing where it drops there. So uh, let me see if I can find it. Uh, Deb Denny is here from Indiana. P.S. Thanks for your prayer beads and thanksgiving for a kindly neighbor who helped me with some maintenance I can't do myself. That is great. Uh, Steph says, hey, uh, hello to Duncan and Ava Lynn from old Steph in Sweden. Very good. Rebecca is here from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Yabitz, shalom. Shalom to you too. Uh, Ruth Knox is here from hot Nebraska. 
interesting place. Uh, Folk the Forest says, please prayers for Israel and Iran. Amen to that. Uh, Linda, good evening, Reverend Ed, and everyone pray for Israel. Amen. Oscar says, Israel, Iran, the U.S., all these countries definitely need prayers. Um, prayers that cooler heads prevail in this dangerous situation. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, we can also add Yemen to that. Uh, we can add the Red Sea in general. Uh, we can add the Middle East, um, especially, you know, places like we've mentioned. We can mention Lebanon. We can mention Syria. Uh, these places also should be should be held in our prayers. That cooler heads, that wise, that wise people would take the reins of leadership and guide us through this time where there's no more bloodshed. <laughs> It'd be lovely if they could guide us through this time where there's no more bloodshed. Uh, let's see. Stacy says, hello, everyone. Hello, Stacy. Thanks for being here. Uh, VetNet says, hi, Duncan and Ava Lynn and everyone. Uh, Jason, uh, hello. I love coming here. Love having you, Jason. Thanks for being here. And Kip Lupton Woke Christian says, hi, all. Reverend Ed, hello to you too. Sorry, I got something in my eye. Ugh. Uh, Monica is here. Hi to my Church Without Walls family from sunny and warm Virginia. Hope everyone is well. And with all the unrest, keep well, keep calm. Love to all. Amen to that. Huckle sa Huckleberry says, I'm checking in from Seattle. Very good. And Marin, hello. Good to be here. Good to have you here, Marin. Thanks for being here. Emergency Remedial Truth says, hello. I've had a magical, marvelous day. I was downtown busking for our international, maybe intergalactic visitors here in Roswell. Uh, was lovely. Hope you are all well. That's amazing. I'd love to hear more about your busking. Uh, I'd love to hear more about your busking. I, I'm, I'm amazed at buskers, to be honest with you. Um, I'm amazed and in awe of buskers. There are, there's just something, it transcends talent. It, it requires something else. And so, yeah, I'm, I'd love to hear about your experiences as a busker. Uh, Charlene says, hi, everyone from Passmore, BC. So glad to be able to partake. Good to see you, Charlene. Thanks for being here. Anne P. Leon says, hello, everyone. Greetings from sunny Toronto. Good to see you, Anne. Thanks for being here. Hope your mom's doing well. Uh, Chris Henderson says, prayer request for everyone in Israel, Lebanon, Gaza, Iran, and everyone that can be affected by this ongoing war. Amen. Owen and Hammer says, peace. Canadian Anglican says, I missed you all. Gloria Lewis says, here brief, briefly from Rainy Ventura. We'll catch the podcast later. Well, good to see you, Gloria. Um, Kylara. Kylara. Is that what it is? Uh, Kylara. Okay, so Kylara. I'll get it. Kylara, thanks for the thanks for sh telling me how to how to sound out your name. Uh, Steve says, "Good morning to all. I'm struck down with a co with a cold at the moment, but a rat tells me it's not COVID." Uh, very good. Uh, call him as I no, sorry, that's somebody else's conversation. Very good. Prayer request from Huckleby for Fiona to soothe her sadness and her hurt. We'll be praying for her. Thank you. Huckleberry will be praying for him. Ad says, hi, Reverend Ed. Hi, everyone. Hello, Ad. Rock Mumbles. God bless you, Rock. Thank you for your generosity. Hello, Church Without Walls family. Peace and love to all. Amen to that. Uh, music Lover says, hello, everyone from Northern Ontario. Whereabouts in Northern Ontario? I've spent some time up there, but I'd love to hear where you're from. Uh, Contrafax says, good morning. Good morning to you, Contrafax. Um... Let's see. Emily says, hey, Rev. Hey, Emily. Josh says, when are these wars going to end already? When we finally learn our lesson. Maybe that's when it, maybe that's when it'll happen. Excuse me. Maybe that's when it'll happen. Uh, folks, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm feeling a little logy tonight. Uh, we had a church supper here. And like all church suppers, it was, there was just way too much. Uh, it was really fun. It was great being, being able to sit down and eat with some folks. 
uh, but it was it was a lot. And for what it's worth, I had a meeting this week with a friend of mine. Uh, we had a lunch meeting, and I mentioned to her that I'd love to plan a retreat. And she told me how I could go about doing that, and she volunteered to help. So we may actually start planning a retreat for this fall. Keep uh, keep your keep your ears on. We may plan a retreat for this fall. Let's see. Popcorn anytime says, "Hey family, hey popcorn anytime." Owen and Hammer, uh, good to have you here. Random Englander says, "Good day, all carbon based life forms." Hope today is treating you well. Thanks so much. Uh, Emergency Remedial Truth says, Wars are sporadic flare-ups in the general matrix of human selfishness. To fight war increases some total of honesty and kindness in the world by everything we say and do with one another. Yeah, I love that. That's great. Prayer request from Steph. Let's pray for those who have a hard time putting their prayer request into words, but have important prayers that need to be taken care of. Let us be the ones praying for them. Amen. Ad says, prayer requests for peace in the Middle East. Uh, that war won't get worse. Peace in Ukraine as well. Amen. Uh, Gloria says, prayer requests for the family and father who died in an accident last weekend caused by a wrong way driver and those who are seriously injured. Hmm. A family of a father who died in a car accident. Hmm. Um, I don't know if you heard about this, but there was also a fairly, there was a, a, a major uh, attack in Sydney, Australia, where uh, somebody with a knife killed several people before they were uh, they were killed, I believe by police. So we should be praying for for the folks in Sydney who were who were impacted by that uh, by that tragedy, by that horrific tragedy. Uh, Popcorn Anytime says, photos from Yemen break my heart. Photos from Yemen break my heart. Photos from the West Bank break my heart. Photos from Gaza break my heart. Photos from, oh my gosh, we're just, I, I, that's the thing I don't understand, right? It's, it's not like we hear about these wars, but we don't really, we can't visualize it. We're living it in real time. Um, Kailura says, or Kailaros, excuse me, says, uh, for everyone dealing with mental emotional burnout because of all the not good stuff going on with the wars, U.S. election shenanigans, discriminatory legislation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <sighs> yeah. How about we just say for our emotional and mental and spiritual health through this time yeah I, I i love that i think that's that's something that we really need to be we really need to be aware of that for sure crawford daily says why does god allow trump and his hatred god doesn't allow it trump's the consequence of of our society um, again, you know, we, we just finished reading in our book study, which you can be a part of, but in our book study, we just finished reading when, when bad things happen to good people and Kushner, uh, he sort of speaks about this concept of why does God allow these things? And I'm with him when it's, uh, when he says, you know, God doesn't allow this stuff, but God is with us through this stuff. And you know, from he does it, he does apply a more stoic sort of outlook on it, which is to say, but since we are going through it, and since we can, if we know that God is with us as we go through it, we we get to respond, and, and we get to respond in in the best way we are capable of responding, and how, and and so how will we respond? And you know, that's been that's been a really big thing for me over the last couple of weeks. How, how am I responding to, to the advent of hate? How am I responding to, 
to to vitriol? How am I responding to to screaming and roaring and lies? How am I responding to hypocrisy? And and I hope I can when this is all said and done, I can look back and say, well, I responded with love. And I hope all of us can say that. When hate came my way, I responded with love. When I saw hate in action, I responded with love. When I saw people harmed, I responded with love. Um, I think if we can do that, then, then we're doing our part, right? We're doing, we're doing our part. Canadian Anglican says, I think at this, at this point, I think we need to pray for all countries. We are all in dangerous times. Yeah. Folk of the Forest says, prayer request for Ukraine, please. Amen. Um, prayer request from random, random Englander. Uh, don't know if they'd already been mentioned, but here's a request for Bernd, Solveig, and Constantine. We'll be praying for them. We will be praying for them. You know, uh, and I, I I tried to find the guy's name afterwards. It only occurred to me afterwards. But I've been following these shorts on YouTube. And they're some of the, it's some of the first time that I actually felt I need to follow this guy. And it's a fellow who's dying. He has, I believe he has Parkinson's. And he has uh, sort of gone to his happy place to enjoy, to enjoy these days, these last days of his life. And listening to him and watching him I feel really um, I feel really I, I don't know think encouraged is the right word but I feel really blessed I feel really blessed by his presence I feel really br- blessed in what he's doing uh, and I've also noticed that uh, Captain Corey his family have been posting about his funeral so uh, we should be praying for them as well Um, Jennifer says, hello from beautiful, from a beautiful evening here in South, Southwest Lower Michigan. Good to see you, Jennifer. Thanks for being here. Um... Let's see. James says, hey, Reverend Ed. Hey, James. Good to see you. Chanter of the North says, hello, everyone. Hello, Chanter of the North. Thanks for being here. Jason says, prayer request for my second cousin's IEP, that it goes well and she can stay in school. Absolutely. We'll be praying for her. Uh, Olivia says, hi, everyone. I'm glad that I made it. Hope you're all having a great day. Thanks, Olivia. We are. I'm having a great day. I hope everybody else is too. Um, Column, as I see him, says, yes, on buskers. There is a 15-year-old young lady who busks on violin on YouTube. She's excellent. Oh, that's amazing. Um, Let's see. Sue, new viewer and follower. Good to see you, Sue. Thanks for being here. Sue Ann Hungerford. Uh, Enjoy your style and thoughtful considerations. I need prayers. I have been sick for eight days and still not able to keep my regular schedule. Hello to everyone here. Sue, it's really great that you're here. I'm really grateful for it. And we will definitely be praying for uh, Sue is sick. So we'll be praying for you. Enjoy these people. They're amazing people. They're amazing. Now, because you're, you're new and you showed up, be prepared for like a plethora of hellos. Good to see you. Great to be here. Good to have you. Because they're, they're kind of, they're, they're almost too nice. You know what I mean? You know when some people are just too nice? That's what you folks are like sometimes. So, you know, let the love in begin. Uh, Canadian Anglican says, I've been asked to come up with ideas as to how my church can have more of an online presence. Excellent. Excellent. Um, Many churches are doing the same thing. The thing is, um, uh, what I've discovered is what you do online 
those people need to feel. You need to make sure that they understand they're a part of your community, that they're not just viewers, that they are a part of your community. And that's sort of the thing that we're trying to work on here at St. Margaret of Scotland uh, from our parish perspective, that you don't just tune in and catch us on Facebook. You're a part of this community. Um, so we've also, anyway, if you, if you ever want to talk about it, let me know. Uh, Gloria Lewis says, oh, there was a great, there's a guy in, in Ontario. Oh, what was his name? There was a guy in Ontario. He was actually hired by, uh, the diocese of, of, of Canada, I think. And he, his job was online church planting. Ryan Sim, tell your pastor, tell your, tell your rector to see if he can find Ryan Sim or, or see if he can find any of Ryan's, um, any of Ryan's work because the diocese would have it. Uh, Ryan is a brilliant guy, really, really genuinely, a genuinely lovely guy. And, uh, uh, who who did some r- amazing work. So that's what I would tell you to do because you might even be able to get him to come to your parish and to help with this. He did some really cool things. I want to say he was in the Ottawa area, but Ryan Sim, R-Y-A-N-S-I-M-M. And if you do happen to see him, say hi. Uh, say hi from, to, from Ed. He'll remember me. <laughs> He probably won't, but great guy. Um, let's see. Random Englander says, for the homeless population, government seems to be looking to further victimize them with fines for being a nuisance. Well, you know, I mean, you should know better than to be homeless, right? And and obviously, if you're homeless, you, you should know better to be, than to be seen. If you're going to be seen, then you're going to be fined. That's just the way, that's just the way normal, healthy civilizations work, isn't it, Random Englander? I'm being, I'm being sarcastic. I hope everybody can, can get that, um, for the homeless. Amen. Yeah. I mean, here in Halifax, we have, a we actually have some, some pretty major, we have a lot of buildings going up. There's a lot of new construction in the city. Uh, I want to say there's like 30 cranes, operating, doing their thing in the city. And by the time it's all said and done, almost none of it will be affordable housing. Like for the, so they're putting these new great big buildings up in neighborhoods that are sort of, you know, run down a little bit. So when they start putting those buildings up, those people have to leave. Those people who live there generally live there because it's affordable. The buildings that are going up are going to have apartments in them that those people who had to leave are never going to be able to afford. And we do, now, if this was, if we had a stagnant population, then other places would open up as those people move into these places and those places become more affordable. It's the way the economy would just sort of balance itself. But we also have like 100,000 people coming into, they, they anticipate like 100,000 people coming into the province in the next two or three years. Half the population of Nova Scotia lives in Halifax. So that means like 50,000 people are coming in and we got no place for them, which means Anyway, you, you, you understand, you understand the, the crisis, right? Uh, let's see. Steve says, prayer request for the victims of the random stabbing attack in Sydney yesterday. Six dead. And the culprit was shot dead by police. Yeah, I was reading about that this morning. So, so surprising. Uh, Emergency Remedial Truth says, only love can conquer hate. Do as much as you can. Love has a ripple effect and it's contagious. Yeah. Yeah. Dinora says, hello from Texas. Hello. Thanks for being here. Uh, Prayers for peace. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Um... Leslie says a retreat. Yay. So yeah, the, the, cause I was, I was kind of trying to figure out how do we do this in Halifax? And, and what my friend suggested was don't do it in Halifax. There's a little tiny village called DeBert, which is just outside of, outside of Truro, which is another you know, smaller, uh, smaller city. I think, I think Truro is a city. It's a smaller city here in Nova Scotia, about an hour away. Uh, DeBert's about an hour away from Halifax and they've got a lovely retreat center and, uh, I mean, it is, it's truly amazing. And we could do some, we could just hang out for like, 
a few days, all of us together at this retreat center out in the country in Nova Scotia. And if you want it to happen, if you maybe if you wanted to go see parts of the province after the retreat or even before, then you could do that. Uh, and maybe we could plan a field trip or two to go to, you know, some of the, the Nova Scotia things. But it might be just really, really fun. That's kind of what I'm thinking at this point. And, and not play it by ear. Obviously, we'll have to do more planning than that. But, you know, this is the first time we get together. Well, it, you know, it'll, we'll, it'll be what it'll be, but we'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, anyhow, that's just my, that's just my thought on it. I get, I get excited kind of thinking about this stuff. Yeah. Um, let's see. Hani says, so yeah, so when we put a prayer request up, if you could, big, bold, capital letters, prayer request. Uh, but I did happen to see Sue's. So thank you, Hani, for the reminder. Yeah. Jerry Black is here. Prayers for many. Yeah. Just pray, right? Uh, the captain is here, Captain Spifari. Uh, you should really talk about Ruby Frank and Jody uh, Hildebrandt. They were behind a really horrific case of Christian fundamentalist child abuse. Yeah, I don't know much about that story. So here, let me write this down. Um, I've seen the names and I, I, I've seen Ruby Frank's name. So I wrote that down and I will, I will I'll take a look at it. Yeah. I mean, usually when I do a video, um, my, my point of the video isn't, I, despite the fact that it sometimes come across this way, the points of my videos, I try not to make them be about condemning anybody, but rather here's what's going on. Here's an observation. Here's what we can learn from it for our particular Christian journey. Here's what we can learn from what this person has done. How do we learn from this? Um, maybe we do, maybe I do have to do a video that we're not supposed to abuse people, that we're not supposed to manipulate people, that we're not, so, maybe I do. God help us that, that I have to do a video about that. Uh, Josh Didier says, you are amazing. Thank you, Josh. You are amazing. And thank you very much for your generosity. Music Lover says, I'm from Sudbury, home of the Big Nickel. So we have people in my congregation here at St. Margaret of Scotland from Sudbury. And I was in Sudbury about five years ago. A buddy of mine was a bishop up there. His name was Tom Corston. Tom has since passed away. And uh, he invited me up. I was a chaplain at a, I was a chaplain at a retreat for the clergy of the diocese of, of, uh, of, oh God, what's the diocese up there? I can't remember the diocese name. Moosini. Moosini. So I was a, I was a, the chaplain and the speaker for a clergy retreat at the Diocese of Moosini. And that was up in Timmins. And I was also there in Sudbury at, I want to say it's Christ Church, way right downtown, the big, huge, massive Anglican church right downtown. And I got to teach and preach there. And Sudbury, I, I really enjoyed Sudbury's downtown. It had a really cool feel about it. So music lover, thanks for being here. Enjoy. Say hey to folks up in Sudbury for me. Um, Steph has a prayer request for Burnt and Solvay and for their friend Sarah in Iraq and for her brother in Emmanuel. Thanks for all your recent prayers. Amen. Uh, Seawolf Blue, good to see you again. Uh, Jerry Blacks is including prayers for Babe and her older brother, uh, both hospice patients as of yesterday. Hmm. For Babe and brother in hospice. For sure, we'll be praying for them, Jerry. We will be praying for them. Uh, Emergency Remedial Truth says, I fear nothing. I think you should fear nothing too. If you don't want to trust God, trust yourself and your instincts. There is nothing to fear ever. I'd love to get there. It's a journey. Getting to that place, right? Getting to that place when when fear isn't a motivator is a is an, is a journey. And, and by fear, I mean like chronic fear. Uh, chronic fear that looks like anxiety. You know, obviously, bear jumps out at you in the woods. Yes, you're going to feel fear right? 
you're going to feel fear because fear is the thing that's going to fuel you to run. The problem is, is when fear becomes chronic, that I'm afraid of things that are unseen. I'm afraid of things that haven't come, that aren't in front of me. I'm afraid when things haven't jumped out at me, uh, but I'm afraid that they might. Um, but when it's a chronic kind of um, continuous thing that we feel, yeah. Um, Dr. Smith says this madness is of its own making. Yeah, it is. It is, and yeah, it's awful. Uh, B is here. B, thank you very much. Number five, her first, her fifth, excuse me, fifth super chat on a live stream. Thanks very much, B. Thank you for all that you do, Reverend Ed. Thank you, B, for for being here, and thank you very much for your generosity. Uh, the captain says there are many authoritarian prayer requests, many authoritarian and mass surveillance laws being pushed in the U.S. COSA, uh, Earn It Act, and many reactionary state laws. Let's pray these laws aren't passed. <sighs> Let's pray for freedom and trust. And and you know. For, for what it's worth, Captain Spisfari, for others, yeah, you guys are, you're seeing some of these surveillance laws come up and, and you know, be, what do they call that, when, when they're reauthorized. Um, there are, there are Western countries, um, NATO, you know, allies of the U.S., great friends of the U.S., who have much stricter um, surveillance laws, like ridiculously strict surveillance laws. Oh, let's pray for trust and for freedom. Yeah. Um, Michael says, God has given us dominion. Why do we suffer evil? Because we commit evil. Yeah. Evil is not some exterior thing. Evil's the result. What we do to one another, uh, the harm we cause one another, um, the blame we, we cast upon one another, the vilification, uh, the victimization, these are, these are evil things that lead us to increasingly evil actions against one another. But they're, they're of our own, as it was said. This is of our own creation. We choose it. Right? We choose it. And I, and I, I can only give you, I could give you a flippant answer. Uh, and I don't, it shouldn't not flippant, uh, trite maybe, to simplistic answer. Evils hates easy, right? Hates easy. Sitting down with someone and talking, sitting down with someone and compromising, sitting down and 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 sharing, uh, seeing someone as an enemy is much easier than than seeing someone as a human being when you may be asked to to give up something of yourself for their benefit, for their, for their good. When you may be asked to give up something that you or, or your state uh, cherishes for, for the benefit of, for the benefit of others. Um, we choose evil over love. We choose evil over love. God has given us dominion and well, there's a there's a maritime expression here. I don't know if it if it fits anywhere else, but um, the the expression says you pissed it away, meaning that it was given to you and you wasted it. Right? God's given us dominion. God's given us the ability to choose what is right and to do good, to 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 offer mercy and to act justly. Uh, God has given us the ability to be empathetic and to be curious and to and to to question as opposed to. Uh, as, as opposed to label and, and, and vilify uh, and to condemn. And w we've wasted it. We've pissed it away. We've pissed it away because it's hard. It's hard to live a life of love. Again, my simplistic, kind of annoyed, um, irritated answer. And I apologize for, I'm not annoyed at you and I'm certainly not irritated with you. It's, it's the fact that this is like the cycle. This is the cycle. Oh, we're going to go to war again. Oh, we're going to fight again. Oh, more people are dying. 
Yep, more people are dying. Oh, there's an election coming up. Oh, and you're going to kill more people. Well, I better vote for you. Right? Oh, there's an election coming up and you're telling me how these people are dangerous and those people are dangerous and that you're going to protect me. Oh, well, I better vote for you. It's the cycle, man. <coughs> Excuse me. Jack says, with everything happening, I thought I was becoming a nihilist. Uh, it's pronounced uh, nihilist or nihilist. Then I realized it doesn't matter. <laughs> Very funny, Jack. Congratulations. Uh, Omar says, the Gnostics considered the God that Jesus said created the world was a God that loves misery and suffering, but his father was the God of love. Could be. Can't say. I can prove it. I, I've, I've read that. I've not delved deep into it. It didn't grab my attention. And so I, I didn't. Yeah. Susan is here. Hello, just popping in. I'll be in and out. My husband just got home from driving truck all week. I hope he's safe. I hope he gets some rest while he's with you. Uh, I'm glad to have him home. I bet you are. God bless you, Susan. Thanks so much. Um, let's see. Uh, ha, 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 ha. So Canadian Anglican says chanter of the chanter. My church has a Facebook and YouTube page, but only really post our services on YouTube and that's all. So YouTube doesn't really like, um, doesn't really like um, some of those longer posts, right? So it, it doesn't promote it because you have, if you don't have a large audience, longer posts just don't don't generate enough gravity and YouTube doesn't make enough money. And because they're not making enough money, they don't promote it. So Facebook is actually a better place for church services. Uh, just my take on it. Like our live event here, when we first got started doing this was like 50, 60 people and they weren't promoting it at all. It wasn't until we turned super chats on and, and some donations were coming in that YouTube went, Oh, Maybe we should promote this a little bit more. And now you're seeing, we're seeing it growing more and more and more. It's the same as like our Wednesdays. When it first started, it was really, nobody was seeing it because it wasn't generating anything. Um, but it, YouTube promotes the stuff that uh, that people are, are going to and, um, and that they can earn some, some revenue from. Anyway, uh, that's all, you know. Neither here nor there. Congratulations for doing it. Keep doing it. Keep sharing. Keep getting that stuff out there. Um, Contravax says, right. Don't forget to press the like button and subscribe. Yes, absolutely. Talking about all the algorithm and things like that, please hit like, hit subscribe for sure. Uh, Zero Motivation says, prayer request, rough week. The lab report that was due, uh, labs are a hurdle. The subject will have to uh, drop to drop course or fail, uh, the phone broken, thus can't access uh, uni, week-long anxiety, paralysis, oh, zero motivation. We will be praying for all that you're going through. As a student. Um, let me see here. Da, 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 da. Zero motivation, zero motivation, zero motivation was the last one I talked to. Yancey says, oh my God, Reverend Ed, your haircut is fantastic. It's, it's bald. <laughs> I've got one of those little things that I just, sort of sand my head with uh, from time to time. But thank you very much. Um, Steve says, oh, great. Another spiritual mouth to feed. Is it not nice enough for you? <laughs> um, Olivia says, I sure wish I could find my happy place. I'm having a hard time as I'm living with my daughter and her family. And it's been a trial. Yeah. Happy place. Maybe it's a coffee shop, right? Happy place. Maybe it's a, a path. Maybe it's a park bench. Happy place could be, you know, could be a bathtub. Who, who knows? Um, not all of us have, you know. And I think this guy's, I think this guy's probably pretty fortunate that he has a literal place that he can escape to as his happy place. 
Um, let's see. DR Smith's, oh, John says, hello, this is John and Harriet from Florida. We're on the road. Hello, John and Harriet. Be safe on the road. Safe travels to wherever you're going. Are you coming to Nova Scotia? Lovely that you're coming to Nova Scotia. Can't wait to see you. Um, but be safe. Be safe wherever it is you're going. DR Smith says, autism has unlocked my world and allowed me to have empathy for myself and everyone else. You never know what others are going through. We act on assumptions based on bad info and react without thinking. And we do that, again, you mentioned it, uh, DR, we do that to ourselves, right? We, 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 we make assumptions about ourselves. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, a friend of mine sent me a video today talking about balance, that people with ADHD often have like this weird way of walking, this world, sometimes they have this weird balance and I'm, I'm watching them and I'm going, I walk like that, I do that. And then they go on to describe that, you know, during doing certain activities is really challenging because their their balance isn't quite the way everybody else's balance works. And I'm like, oh. and now all of a sudden I realize, oh, it's it's not that I'm weak and it's not that I'm inadequate. It's it's that I just I balance differently. The way my brain works balances me differently. It, it's really quite fascinating. Anyhow. Um Derriere, again, he says it. Don't forget to hit like and share. That's how new people find us. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to see if I can find some. Kathy is here. Good day. Good day. Good day. Good day, Kathy. A Canadian Anglican says, hey, Sue, thanks for coming. Now you're stuck with us. <laughs> one of us. One of us. Anyhow. Um, uh, Kyla Ross says, Reverend Ed, there's no such thing as too much genuine love and acceptance. There isn't. There is not. There is. You're, you're right. I'm, I'm just being, I'm just joking around, but there isn't, there isn't too much love. It's just not possible there. It's not possible that there's too much love. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Jean-Marie Rock is here. Hello, everyone. And Reverend Ed, good to see you. Uh, and I'm going to read this one from Yancey because Yancey Hibert is, which is my grandfather's last name, Hibert. Uh, oh my God, Reverend Ed, your haircut is fantastic. Thank you. Sea uh, Wolf says, prayers for you and your family, Olivia. Amen. So we better write that down because Sea Wolf or Sea Wolf Blue says so. Dorcas has made it. Hello, everyone. Hello, Dorcas. Thanks for being here. Um, LG Vaughn. So when I was telling you about the friend I was talking to this week at lunch, that's LG Vaughn, says Ryan Simmons is, is in Ajax, Ontario. Ajax, Ontario. Reach out to him. He's a great guy. He's a lovely guy. Um, I'm not sure if he's still if he's still doing the online stuff. Uh, I know it was an experiment that he was involved in that he was kind of running. And uh, I really, I got a lot out of what he was doing. So, uh, for example, our book study, that's that came out of something that I saw that Ryan was doing. Thank you, LG Vaughn. I appreciate you letting us know. Um, Suzanne Potts says, good evening from Iowa. Good evening to you in Iowa. Um, let's see. Emergency Remedial Truth says, I've been on TV in Germany and in Estonia and was recently recorded by an American show. Have not heard back about, um, we get visitors here from everywhere. My picture, uh, is in cell phones all over the world. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Huckleberry says, uh, prayer request for peace and happiness for Reverend Ed. Oh, that's kind of you. Uh, who gives me a Buddhist, such a sense of peace and calm. You, that, that's really kind of you, Huckleberry. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, Contrafax, helping where I can and how I can use it as you see fit. Amen, Contrafax. Thank you very much for your generosity. I hope you're feeling, I hope you're feeling well. I hope you're feeling better. I know you had kind of a trying week, huh? Uh, so if you want to let us know how things are going, I think there's a lot of people here who would, who'd love to hear from you about that. Uh, Olivia says, that's just it. I don't know what my happy place would be. Um, I thought I had it a few years ago when I, but, and then I got sick with uh, Julian Barr syndrome and it's not been the same since. 
I hear you. I hear you, Olivia. Sometimes it's pretty, sometimes it's eluding. Sometimes our happy place can be, can be, can be really eluding. Sometimes we have to create it for ourselves. I know from time to time, my happy place is, is in a book. And I let myself sort of sink into the book. It's not the same when it comes to TV or movies, but sometimes that book can, I can sink myself. And it doesn't have to be like a good book. It can be a piece of trash. <laughs> uh, but you know, if you can allow yourself to, to be absorbed into it, 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 it can be really refreshing. Um, and it's, it's some, also one of those things that something, you know, it can't be taken from you can't be taken from you so yeah uh Contravax says i am glad i got the heart procedure done before arizona got shoved back in the 1800s yeah i mean thankfully right you, you don't have to worry about only surgeries from the civil war are going to be permitted from now on you know they want to make it fair for everybody so now all surgeries must be performed with civil war era surgical tools um ad says uh, where I live, a lot of citizens are starting to speak up for the homeless at city council meeting. Uh, people want the homeless to get help. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I think most people probably do. It is frustrating sometimes. And I know around here we've seen it where where uh, where they were going to put in, um, you know, tiny houses or or micro housing for the, for for homeless to to help them get off the streets or help them get out of tents, that neighbors have stood up and said, "Not here." Like, yeah, no, no, we want we want to help the homeless, but not this neighborhood. Another neighborhood can do it, but we don't want that to happen here. Um, and you know, I can't say that their that their fears are are unfounded, but the only way people are going to get the help they need is if we're willing to say, okay, yeah, um, here is fine. We can't ship people off to the woods, right? They, they, we need to put people in places where, where there's a certain population density because that's where the doctors are and that's where the, the public facilities are and that's where the, the, the infrastructure is and, and people who are struggling, people who are struggling financially, the, the underhoused, um, the impoverished, they need to live in places where, where there's infrastructure because the, the infrastructure that can help them. Um, they, need, they need to be able to get in to see their social worker. They need to be able to get to the library because it's at the library where they're going to be able to print off their resume for free. Um, they, they need to have access to, to, to public... Um, public facilities so that so that they can they can get the help they need so that they can get the the treatments that they need you can't ship them off to you know to 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 a rural community that doesn't that isn't equipped logistically speaking that isn't isn't equipped to to provide for them um but i you know ad i'm really glad to hear that around your in in your area lots of citizens are starting to speak up uh in in you know, supporting the homeless and hoping to help the homeless. That's beautiful. Music's Lover says, My father passed away from Parkinson's. My brother has been living with Parkinson's for the last 10 years. My prayers go out to the gentleman who mentioned, who, uh, you met, gentleman you mentioned who is preparing for his death. Well, let's pray for people with Parkinson's. I've had a couple of friends who've had it. Uh, and who've passed away from it, and it's it's not easy. Uh, Donald says prayers for the family of Milwaukee woman who was dismembered. Ugh. We'll be praying for them, Donald. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, Lynn says, good evening, everyone. So happy to be here. Good evening, Lynn. Thanks for being here. Ellis says, why have a, why has affordable housing? Why have affordable housing? It doesn't make the company as much money as uh, some well-off person's place does. Yeah. Yeah, no, I hear you. Uh, Charlene says, I lived in Vancouver and Victoria. 
when the change over housing took place, nowhere to go but the street. Disgusting. Greed at its finest. Uh, I. Armin says, tomorrow is planting day for our church garden in West Philadelphia. We're hoping to have enough produce to give away to the community this year. Please pray that planting goes well. That's awesome. Um, so I. Harmon's church garden planting. Ours, we have a community garden here at St. Margaret of Scotland, and ours is coming up mid-November. Our, our planting season's significantly shorter than yours but um, that's awesome and what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, we're going to have a short prayer service and then we're going to have a barbecue while everybody cleans up and and prepares their garden yeah steve says it was in the u.s the culprit would have if it was in the u.s the culprit would have had an ak uh, an ak uh, 15 an ar-15 uh, and there would have been at least 60 dead. Yeah, you know, and, the, and of course, the, the way that that'll be flipped around is if it was in the U.S., he, he never would have stabbed anybody. Excuse me. If it was in the U.S., he never would have stabbed anybody because, uh, you know, nine people would have shot him. Um, but you're right. You know, it, it could have been a whole lot worse. The person, there was obviously something going on for the person. Uh, if you're going to take six, six lives uh, at random... There was obviously something going on for the person. You know, you hate to say it, but you're grateful that that was the only, that was the only weapon at their disposal. Uh, and it still feels gross saying that. Oh, anyway, but you, you understand what I'm trying to get at. William says, hello from North Carolina, home of Texas Pete and Cheer, and cheer Wine. I lived in North Carolina. I loved North Carolina. Whereabouts in North Carolina are you, William? Yeah. Um, Popcorn Anytime says, pray I can get to the retreat without flying. Well, it depends where you are. You could drive. It just might be a very long drive. Uh, you might be able to take a train. We've had people visit here by train. Um, you could take a boat. We've I've had people show up in Halifax getting off a cruise ship saying, hey, Reverend Ed, I'm here. and Would you like to meet? Yep. Um. Let's see. Trent is here just dropping in for a bit. Hey, Trent. Good to see you. Um, Donald says prayers for the woman. Okay, we got that one. Very good. Uh, Dre Lightrider, prayer request for projection from my uh, protection from my Goliath. I'm trying to keep faith in God, but my doubt in being a child of God has me on the verge of giving up. My Goliath is very powerful. Hmm. That's really powerful imagery. That is really powerful imagery. Dre, if there's ever anything I can do, and for what it's worth, folks, this goes out to everybody, but if there's ever anything we can do, we do awful, offer pastoral care here. And uh, whether it's myself or uh, whether it's myself or we have an associate who helps us as well, it's free of charge. There's no charge. There's no diagnosis. There's no fixing, but we are here to listen and... Uh, and if we can if we can be there for you, please send me an email. My email's in the in the pinned comment at the top. Uh, but send me an email, and we'll see what we can do to set something up that we can meet virtually. Uh, usually, it's on Zoom or on Facebook. And and maybe we can maybe we can help you with your Goliath. Maybe maybe you can tell us what your Goliath is, and and maybe there's we have an opportunity to share our faith, um, share our strength. Maybe we can help you carry your burden. Um, but Dre, that is really powerful imagery, and I'm really grateful that you shared us shared that with us. And we will be praying. Uh, we'll be praying for. Well, we'll be praying for your victory over your Goliath. Yeah. Uh, Emily, prayer request: There was a transgender rapper who unfortunately was murdered. Please pray for him. We'll be praying. Thank you, Emily. Um, John F. says, Finland has the highest success rate in the world and almost has eliminated homelessness by using a housing first policy after housing. Then you get help with whatever issues 
uh, you need help with. I mean, that almost kind of sounds similar to what Portugal has done when it comes to addiction issues, that the first thing we're going to do is get you help. We're going to get you the help you need. So you need help with addiction. We're going to take care of that. But they recognize that to help some with it, someone with an addiction means taking care of some of the other stresses in life. Because if you can take care of some of the other stresses, the, 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 the power that that addiction has over people diminishes. Right? If you can reduce the stress, then there's less for them to have to cope with. And if there's less for them to have to cope with, there's less reason for them to use. Uh, and my, the last I've seen from Portugal is that it was actually, it's actually being, it's really quite successful. It's really quite successful. So um, that's awesome. Thanks for sharing that, Jack, about, uh, about Portugal. No, oh, so, excuse me, John. Thank you for sharing that, John. Uh, prayer request from Steve for the lost souls who feel they must lash out in random acts of violence. Yeah. You know, years ago, um, a mentor of mine, uh, Reverend Carolyn, she was at a church that I was assigned to as a, as a seminarian. And we were talking about suicide and I think we've we've actually we've actually had this conversation here, but it sort of does apply to what to what Steve's bringing up um, in the old prayer book, our 1962 prayer book, uh, a book that's filled with our, our various services and our liturgies. That's where the compline that we'll celebrate tonight comes from. That the compline we pray tonight, in part, comes from that. Uh, it talks about very briefly talks about suicide when it comes to funerals, and what it says is paraphrasing. You can't do a funeral for someone who takes their own life in their right mind. For someone who was in their right mind who takes their own life. Again, I think we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Well, the bottom line is nobody in their right mind takes their own life, right? They're carrying things that we can't possibly imagine. And, and this feels like the only way forward. If they were in their right mind, if they were perfectly healthy, they never would have done this, right? They never would have been able. To, they they would have, they would have been able to cope. They coped yesterday. They would have been able to cope today. And I think there's something to that when it comes to these people who commit these random acts of violence. That there's no way they're in their right minds. There's no way. There's no way they're coping in, in any kind of healthy way. And so, yes, we should be praying, you know, and as difficult as that can be, as difficult as it can be to pray for someone who does something horrific, like, like this person in Sydney, Australia. It's important for us to do it. It's important to pray for, for the person who's committed it. It's important to pray for the people who are on the verge, for the people who are considering it, for the people who don't know how they're going to cope. And that, and that sadly, this might be the thing that they do. So, yeah. I mean, again, you know, how many times this week have we talked about the need for increased empathy? We, we just, we've talked about increased love. Love leads to peace. We've talked about increased giving. Giving leads to peace. Empathy. Empathy leads to curiosity. Curiosity leads to increased empathy. Increased empathy leads to understanding. Increased understanding leads to leads to real change. Right. Uh, Aria. Hey, Aria. There are many abandoned buildings in the U.S. and many homeless they could help. It's frustrating that the houses there... Uh, the houses are there, but the people can't use them, so they become unusable husks instead. And, you know, I worked in construction for a lot of years with my dad's company. And I, I think it was my dad. It might've been one of his carpenters. Um, my dad was actually trained as an electrician, but he had a bunch of really amazing guys who worked with him. But one of them, it was again, either him or somebody else said, a house that goes unused will fall apart so much faster. Well, just it's a house that isn't used dies. It literally, it just dies and it disintegrates. A house that's used, it doesn't. 
I have no, I, I, I can't explain it. And it's not about maintenance. It's not like, well, yes, if you're in the house, but then you'd be, you'd be doing your maintenance. It has nothing to do with maintenance. A house that is unused will begin to fall apart before a house that is, is lived in. That's not a scientific thing. That comes from, from a contractor and carpenters. But I've been around enough of those kinds of spaces and you see it. Again, can't tell you can't explain why it's not scientific it's not gospel but i have a tendency to believe carpenters when they when they talk about that kind of stuff chanter of the north says my heart hurts me too uh walt now pig pig says please pray for my wife sherry she has covid and she's very sick we'll be praying for sherry and walt now We'll be praying for you both. Uh, Jerry Rossman is here from Western Iowa. Good to see you, Jerry. Thanks for being here. Uh, Captain says, I specifically bring up Ruby Frank and Jody Hildebrand because their methods were extreme, but they const constantly tried to justify it and when arrested, blamed it on the end times. I'll, t I'll take a look. I will definitely take a look. Thank you. Uh, Cherry Ann says, the big nickel, is there a lot uh, a lot of that element or is that the name of something? So, um, uh, music lover, can you please explain to Cherry Ann what the big nickel is? Uh, Trent says, prayer request. I adopted a puppy. Oh, died a week later. I'm terribly sorry. I feel like I could have prevented it and I'm devastated, not sleeping well. Please help me to realize it was common and stop flogging myself. <sighs> Trent, I'll tell you a story. Um, a good friend of mine, uh, a person I love dearly, rescued a puppy uh, from Louisiana. Great dog. Um, the dog was, the dog had issues and they knew the dog had issues when they, when they agreed to adopt it. Um, the dog had issues. They had the dog, had the dog about a year and then they had to put the dog down. The issues just were insurmountable. And financially, they just, they couldn't, they couldn't provide. They couldn't provide what was needed. They felt an extreme amount of guilt. Now, you, your, yours is a, a much shorter period of time. But they found an extreme amount of guilt. And, and, and please understand, I'm not trying to tell you this is exactly the same context or the same situation. It isn't. I understand. But they experienced a great deal of guilt. I could have done more. I should have done more. I, I needed to have done more. And what I said to them and what I say to them, and this might sound silly, but I was around them. I was around them and the dog enough that I saw that dog smile. And I mean it. That dog smiled whenever they walked in the room. For everything that dog went through in its life, and it was it was abused. It was traumatized. It was incredibly, uh, it had been neglected and, and early, the early neglect is what led it to, led to its later illnesses. But that year, that time that, uh, that the dog spent with, with their rescuer, it didn't take much to see that the dog was the happiest it had ever been. You could see it smile. Man, I'm telling you, you could see it smile. I don't know if you've ever seen a dog smile. It's actually kind of shocking, uh, off-putting a little bit. But this dog, you knew. You knew. And, and the dog knew it was sick. The dog knew it was sick. And the dog, just honest to God, the dog seemed to... Make the most out of every day. I'm getting kind of emotional thinking about it. So Trent, thank you for that. But the dog made the most out of every single day. So 
you had this dog a week, um, you had this puppy a week. My bet would be that the puppy felt loved for a week. Maybe more love than it had ever felt. The puppy felt at home for a week. Maybe, maybe the puppy had never felt like it had ever found a home. So I hope you're able to, I hope you're able to see what you provided as opposed to simply seeing what you weren't able to give because it matters, right? It absolutely matters. Um, let's see. Keith, thank you very much for your generosity, Keith. God bless you. Uh, folks, if you're wondering what we use our Super Chats for, uh, we use it to help out in our neighborhood. None of it goes into the oil barrel. None of it goes to put a roof over on the, on the church. None of it goes into maintenance. None of it goes into salaries. It goes to things like our sandwich program, which we have over at the community college where we make 200 plus sandwiches for students, uh, you know, food insecure students over there. Uh, we also provide a couple of dozen sandwiches for one of the local high schools. Uh, we provide, we help out with uh, the, the lunch program at the elementary school. And we provide for the elementary school in other ways with supplies and with other foods. Uh, we provide clothes and boots and hats and mitts because you need that stuff here in the winter and that stuff's kind of expensive. Um, and we're about, we are about to start a new ministry where we're going to take supper to a, uh, a nearby, uh, a near, it, it's a, it's a, it's a subsidized living facility. So it's, it's not a care facility or anything like that. It's an apartment building uh, with people who live there on, on a subsidized rent. And we've had, we've been working with some folks over there and we've been actually uh, taking communion over there once a month. And we're now beginning to have a, a monthly supper just as a way of showing them that we love them and spending some time with them. And as you know, we love to eat. So that's a, that's a new thing that we're going to be doing thanks to your assistance mainly through super, well, not mainly through super chats, but through super chats and through, and through the, um, through the views, right? All the likes, all the, all the subscribes, all the shares, all that stuff matters. So thank you very much for all your assistance and all your help. Um, Uh, Aria says, it's easy to say not to fear. Oh, yeah. No, no. It's very easy to say not to fear. Oh, thou shalt not fear. Uh, it's much harder to actually do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Un that's the understatement of the night right there, Aria. It is very easy to say you shouldn't fear. It is ridiculously hard and complicated to actually live that way. Yeah. Steph, thank you very much for your generosity. $130 Canadian. I hope you find somewhere to use it among your ministries. We definitely have a place to use this. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, prayer request from Dorcas for Ken, who got a pacemaker but is still in hospital. We'll be praying for him. Dragon Dancer is here. Hey, everybody. How's your Saturday night? It's going well, Dragon Dancer. How are you? Hopefully, you'll be able to spend some time with us and you won't get called out on an emergency. But if you do, God bless you. And thank you for providing for your community. Uh, David Smith says, you guys, uh, I need you to pray for me. The 16th is my appointment with Social Security. Uh, pray they call me and there's no problem. Pray for favor. And I get a very friendly claims representative. Amen. David already wrote it down, buddy. Been praying for you all week. Okay. Been praying for you all week. Thanks so much for sharing that with us. And we will definitely be praying for you tonight. Um, let's see. 
Sherry Ann says, I'll be right back. Well, hopefully we'll see you soon. Prayer request from, uh, from uh, VetNet. Miss Dragon's husband has a CT tomorrow. So we'll be praying for Miss Dragon's husband. Thank you, VetNet, for sharing that. I missed that one. Nate says, evil begins by putting ourselves above others, whether that be man, men over women or our group over another. That's, that's pretty insightful. That's, that's a thinker. Uh, but I, I suspect it's, it's probably true. Maybe evil begins when our, we have the desire to see ourselves above, above those around us. Uh, Omar says, I just consider it to be insane world. So I don't hate anyone or judge anybody. That might be a great way of doing it too. That, right. Let's see. Uh, Kylera says, Reverend Ed, what you're saying right now reminds me of a song I like to listen to revolutionary by Josh Wilson. Why does kindness seem revolutionary? When did we let hate get so ordinary? Oof. I don't know that song, but I think I need to. Um, let's see, Karen. Thank you very much for your generosity, Karen. Thank you, Reverend Ed, and Church with All uh, Church Without Walls friends. Blessings to all. Amen to that. Uh, Suzanne says, "Watched you for some time now, and see Jesus Christ on your heart." I hope so. I hope so. I Listen, I know I fail as much or more than everybody else. Um, but thank you. Thank you for that, Suzanne. That means a lot to me. And thanks for watching. Thanks for sharing. And thanks for the comment. Please, folks, hit like, hit subscribe. And you know, we never ask for this. But yes, s drop a comment. Say hello. Comments matter too. Every time you put a comment out, the algorithm gets all excited. Uh, and it thinks people are talking. So the more comments you put in, the better things go. But uh, if you're comfortable with it, yeah, I'd love to hear. I'd love to be able to uh, just say hello. All right, just give us a hello. Uh, prayer request. Please pray for Joanna and Brian in the Bible study group. I think they could use a prayer. Hmm. We'll be praying for them. Steph, thank you for bringing them up. Um... Let's see here. Oh, dropped all the way to the bottom. So let me go right back to the top and see what I can do. Uh, if I missed your prayer request, my apologies. Um, like sometimes my my comment section, it just sort of goes, oh, no, you're done reading. Drop them down. And I miss like a bunch in there. So let me go through the super chats that are here because I'm going to miss them. Sue Bowler, thank you so much for your generosity. It says, celebrate their first super on a live stream. Yay, Sue, thank you very much for your kindness. And uh, Jay Court, uh, thank you for your generosity and for your, uh, your compassion. Uh, T Flowers, thank you very much for your generosity and for your charity. And John uh, Didier, thank you very much for your, for your super chat. Goal! That's cool. Um, and uh, let's see. And Rebecca, thank you very much for your generosity and for the cute little fox in the corner. Uh, God bless you all. Thank you all for your super chats. That will go, I promise, that goes a long way to helping us out. I, I promise you, I'm not trying to buy a new jet. I don't have a jet. I'm not trying to buy a new car. I'm not trying to buy anything for myself. If you haven't, if you ever just curious about, I wear the same t-shirts over and over and over again. Um, thank you for all that you do. Thank you for helping us make these ministries possible. And, and give us an opportunity to dream about other things that we can do. So one thing that we're doing in June, again, with your help, is we're planning a great big, huge, free community concert. And at this concert, there's going to be food, and there's going to be lots of musicians. And you might be wondering, well, 
you know, if it's a free concert with these musicians, you can get, no, we're, we're, we're going to try to pay the musicians quite well to be here because musicians in our community, excuse me, musicians in our community don't have a tendency to make a whole lot, uh, especially people who are just starting out. And so we want to pay them a really, we want to, we want to give them a really good rate for the day. Um, and yeah, it's, it's so far it's looking really, really exciting. And that's going to be towards the end of June. With that being said, another little announcement. But we have a Bible study that meets every Sunday night on Zoom. And if you're interested in being a part of that Bible study, send me an email and I'll send you the link. And with that being said, we also do a book study. And that book study is Tuesdays at 11 o'clock Atlantic Standard Time. So 11, uh, no, excuse me, 1 o'clock Atlantic Standard Time. So 1 o'clock in the afternoon here in Halifax. And right now we're reading... The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho, Paolo Coelho, and we're about in, let's see, April 30th will be the first day we discuss it, but on April 30th, we're going to be beginning to discuss uh, Richard Bach's Illusions, and I'm really looking forward to that. And we already have our next book picked out after that, but I can't remember it. Steph probably remembers it. Rebecca probably doesn't remembers it, but I can't remember it. And you can be a part of that as well by sending me an email. Now, I did get a couple of emails like in the last 24 hours. Just haven't responded to them yet. And I'll be sending out those links in the very, very, very near future. Um, one other thing, nothing certain yet because I don't know when I would do it. But I've talked to a friend of mine. Uh, I've talked to a friend of mine who is who has been encouraging me to to maybe start up a prayer group, and so I'd like to do that as well. Um, I have lots, so many plans. I have so I have so many plans for you <laughs> for this world. Um, but no, uh, whatever we can do to get together is great. Whatever we can do to share is great. Whatever we can do to get to know each other is great. And uh, I would. In- I'm always encouraged when I spend time with you and uh, and hopefully you get something out of it as well. So I guess that's another thing. If you have an idea about something that we could do to get together, let me know. That'd be cool. Uh, that'd be right on. And if you want to help me with the retreat, let me know if you want to help me with the, tr- the retreat. I'd love to get your input on that. Anyhow, with all that being said, we're going to... Oh, there's another super chat. Let's see. Thank you for providing a safe space for us, uh, Kalara. Thank you very much. And that is Kalara's first super on a live stream. So thank you very much, everybody, for your generosity. Uh, and for those of you that, you know, you, you know, Super Chat is, is, is outside of possibility for you for whatever reason, thank you for being here too. Just having you near is lovely and wonderful. Uh, and I just love this community. I love how you all you all seem to continuously come together. I'm going to go through this right quickly looking for prayer request. Uh, Emergency Remedials Truth says pray for discernments so that as you get to know a faith community, hold back your commitment. Uh, anybody can call themselves a prophet. Yeah. Yeah. Vicky says, I got my Easter be I got my beads on Easter Sunday. Just like I planned. <laughs> no, that wasn't like I planned, but I'm really grateful you got them. I'm really, really grateful that you got them. Uh, Mama Sita says, hey, I'm late, but glad to be here. Good to see you, Mama Sita. Thanks so much for being here. Um, let's see. Liz says, my husband has Parkinson's. It is kicking his behind very hard. I see him changing every day. Prayers for all who have it. Absolutely. Um, Dorcas says, retreat when? Not sure, sometime in the fall. Yeah. Zero Motivation says, I could try driving, but the car might get a bit wet. I'm pretty certain it would get a bit wet. And um, Caitlin says, oh, wow, imagine a boat trip from Galveston, Texas to Halifax. I'm certain it's been done. Not by me, but somebody at some point must have sailed a boat from Galveston to Halifax. Uh, diary of a griever named John Weaver, Reverend Ed, thought uh, taxes was scary, but saw news on Iran missiles into Israel. Need prayers, the world not going into World War III. Very scared. We'll have to do a vid response on my YouTube. That'd be great. Do the video response on your YouTube. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, lots of people are lots of people are really anxious. Lots of people are really anxious. We keep them in our prayers. We hold them close. And we do what we can where we are to offer to offer another example, to offer a different path, an opportunity for a different path. Uh, Wendy says, thank you for this community and for letting me join in. Absolutely, Wendy. Thanks for being here. Off to care for my forever baby, adult autistic son. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me. Amen. Thanks, Wendy. Thanks. For, that's awesome. Thank you, Wendy. Um, Rebecca says, my, a second cousin of mine had Parkinson's. She died in the 90s. I'm sorry for your loss. Uh, Amber is here. Hello, everyone. Hello, Amber. And Lolo is here. Many hardworking people and families are thrust into homelessness by obscene price of housing and health care where I live. Here too. Yeah, here too. And, you know, lots of people, lots of people are living day to day. And if you're living day to day, you don't get to have any kind of a problem. Because if you have that problem that has to be resolved everything else. It's a cascade, right? It's just a, a disastrous avalanche of, of awfulness. Um, Sarah says, homelessness is an incredibly complicated social issue with no easy answers. No easy answers. And it is complicated, but it is something we can solve. Like here in Canada, I've read two, three stories. Three stories. Um, we have medical assistance in dying here in Canada. And it, when it first came about, it was, it was put in place to help people with, uh, with terminal illness. Okay. So a person who, who was experienced, the ALS is the one that comes to mind. So terminal illness, MAID was there for you. Medical assistance in dying, they call it MAID. MAID was available to you and, and you could, you could choose for yourself. Well, now, uh, the rule is it's a chronic illness. So if you're suffering from a chronic illness, then you can, you can choose medical assistance in dying. But I've read three articles where basically the chronic illness was compounded by a chronic issue. For example, poverty. And three people who had a chronic illness who were also experiencing chronic poverty applied for you you have to apply for it but they applied for medical assistance in dying because of their chronic issue and they received permission so now the government hasn't they've put the brakes on a little bit i don't know i don't know where it is right now but the bottom line is there are people in our country who are choosing medical assistance in dying to help them deal with poverty. You know, that's, that's on me. That's on my country. We, we can do something about poverty. We can alleviate poverty. That's not the same as a terminal illness that we don't have a cure for. All we have to do is put the work in. There was a, a lady in Ontario who, she had an extreme uh, allergy to to um to to sense in particular uh cigarette smoke and and she found herself in a in a in an apartment the only apartment she could afford was was a, a big apartment building and lots of people in the apartment building smoked and every time she was around somebody that smoked she would break out like she would break out into debilitatingly painful rashes and so she would stay inside she would stay inside she would stay inside obviously this is no quality of life and so for over a period of five years, she reached out to the government. She reached out to advocates. Those advocates reached out to the government. What she needed was a standalone residence. Okay, that's a big ask. That's a big ask. It's, it's a lot to ask. I need a house. You got to get me a house. But they chose to let her go through with medical assistance and dying as opposed to helping her with a house. The illness was was the illness was recorded everybody knew it was there long time illness right it was all taken into account 
So these social issues, as complicated as they are, and, and, and you're right, there's no easy answers. And the work, I suspect, the work to solve these social issues, not only is it they're not easy answers, but the work is incredibly difficult. But, but it's needed. It's time, right? It's time. Anyhow. Um, let's see. David says, I think housing should be a human right. I completely agree with you. Uh, whether or not they should fa they should have to go to the Hag, I don't know, but I think I think housing should be a human right. I agree. Yeah, Jamie says I was catechized into the Lutheran Church. Look up Martin Luther in the Book of Concord if curious. Thanks for being here. Um, let's see. Stacy, thank you very much for your generosity. Blessings to Reverend Ed and your ministries. Let's celebrate their third super chat. Yay. Good job. Thank you, Stacy. God bless you. Um, William says, my dad passed away in 2019 from Parkinson's. Glad I stopped working and gave him and my mom comfort and safety. Unexplained falls are the unspoken symptoms. Rev, I'm in Durham. Oh, I know Durham. I have a great ballpark in Durham. I have great restaurants in Durham. I like Durham. Yep. Let's see. Again, thank you, Colm. As I see him, Maisie Rose is here. I'm one of 20 women selected in Scotland that's been working on legislation to improve life for women. That's so awesome. Congratulations. Ooh, big responsibility, yeah, but oh, good for you. I'll be asking questions to Scotland's first minister and deputy on Monday. Oh, 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 now Scotland's been doing some really cool things along these lines, and uh, I look forward to seeing what you'll do next. I'd be really excited if the rest of the world would follow Scotland on some of the things. I think Scotland, they provide uh, free feminine hygiene products. Or that was something they were trying to do. I can't remember. But Scotland's been sort of at the cutting edge in, in many ways of providing, uh, of, of creating legislation designed to help, uh, to, to help women with some of these, some of these um, female taxes that, uh, you know, that are specifically, that women end up uh, having to pay for that men don't. Uh, brilliant stuff. Congratulations, Maisie Rose. We are going to be praying for you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mama Sita, thank you very much for your generosity. Three hearts too. It looks like almost like hearts filled with chocolate. So thank you very much, Mama Sita. Now, um, it's, 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 wow, it's 10 o'clock already. Now, again, I'm going to tell you walking, came, coming into this, I was incredibly full from supper. We had a church supper here of spaghetti and it was, I, I just, pasta kills me. So I was incredibly full from supper. Uh, I was really kind of feeling logy, feeling really lethargic. And we just spent an hour and a half together and I feel incredibly energized. So thank you all very much for everything that you give everything that you give me for your energy for your time for your for your your curiosity for your for, for your, your 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 challenges uh you're amazing people you are absolutely amazing people that being said a couple of things i want to talk about tonight because uh if i don't i'll i'll bust uh a few weeks ago a couple of weeks ago i was asked um i can't remember if, if it was live or if it was uh here on the in, in the comments somewhere, but somebody asked me what, what I thought about um, something that the Vatican had released that spoke about transgender care, transgender health care. Now, the document was called the Inf Infinite Dignity document. Uh, the Vatican released it a couple of weeks ago. It had been in the works for a couple of years, uh, some 20 pages, and it talks about, you know, respect for every human being. Um, it's not 
you know, despite the fact that I'm going to be sharing an aspect of it that that I think is that I take a little bit of issue with. The documents actually there's there's many parts of it that are quite lovely, and there's parts of it that are that are, I think ask. Well, there's there's statements in it that are that are fairly big judgments, but if we can reframe those judgments and instead ask instead reframe them to be questions, then it could be quite valuable. Anyhow, the the statement they made about um, trans treatment. Now, not about trans people. Trans people, the document says, are are children of God, and they should be re- recognized and welcomed, and uh, they 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 should be treated with dignity and respect in in the church. But the treatment, um, the treatment they say is um, akin to uh, making oneself God. Right, that people must not tinker with. Um, with their biological, who they were, who they were, cre- who they were born biologically as. Um, it says uh, it follows that any sex change intervention, as a rule, risks threatening the unique dignity the person has received from the moment of conception. The document denounces as contrary to human dignity the fact that in some places not a few people are imprisoned, tortured, or even deprived of the good of life solely because of their sexual orientation. So this, this actually is, sorry, this is the second part of it, but this is one of the good things. It, it clearly says, speaking to some countries where being gay is, is considered illegal. The document says, no, 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 this isn't okay. It's not, it's not a crime. Being gay is not a crime. So back to the trans, trans treatment. It strikes me as I read the document and as I read a couple of articles about it. And, and again, you know, once you start looking at certain things, uh, the great algorithm in the sky starts sending you other things that it thinks you might be interested in. And, and I watched a teacher from the U.S., you know, uh, talking about that they had dozens of years experience working with kids and that seven, eight, nine-year-olds, they just don't know what they're talking about. And they, you know... Um, that that we can't trust them to tell us that they're that they're trans that they're not old enough to know this stuff. These k- people aren't being treated on a whim, right? Sally doesn't come home and say, "Yeah, today, Dad, I want to be a I want to be a boy. Call me Bobby." It's not how it works. It, it's, it, that's, that is so, such a flippant way of understanding this, this medical issue. It, it's not a whim. It's, it's not, you know, some kind of strange thought for today, some passing thought that they'll change their mind in a couple of years. Though there have been people who've, who've changed, changed their mind, but... There's a great deal that goes into just the discussion, right? Before treatment is ever given, there's a great deal of conversation. There's a great deal of questioning. There's a great deal of research. There's a, this isn't just, again, it's not just some kid comes home and goes, oh, I want to be, I, I want to be a boy or I want to be a girl or I want to be trained. No. That's kind of the first thing that I got from this document was the sense that it couldn't understand. The document sort of shows me that, that they just don't understand that, that this isn't an easy, off-the-cuff, letter-rip kind of decision. There's a lot that goes into it. There's a lot of work, exhaustive work, that goes into it. The other thing that that was problematic for me, and we may have talked about this before, but the other thing that was problematic for me with this, with what the document said was, 
it, it's sort of it comes at it from the sense that the physical is what really matters, right? You're born in a particular physical body, and that physical body is the image of God. And yes, but no, we're more than just our body. We're more than just this shell. God, I hope I am more than just my body. The way my body's falling apart, oh Lord, help me. We're more than our bodies. We're the heart, we're our, you know, we're the heart, we're the mind, we're the soul. We're emotional and mental and, and spiritual creatures as well. And yet, again, in situations like this, we have a tendency to look and say, well, this is how you were born. Well, how I was born is also internal as well. And, and this is the conflict. It's the conflict that I experience. The conflict that, that, that is ripping me apart is, is between how I feel internally and, and, and how I appear externally. We're created in the image of God. The full image of God. God is spirit. We are spirit. We're created in the image of God. And it says, you know, and, and therefore they created them. Physical, mental, emotional. We need to see that in one another. We, we need to recognize that the person I'm looking at is more than just their physical body. I mean, this is a big deal. In, in society, this is a big deal. How often do we, do we decide that somebody is worth more or less because of the way they look? We value people based on their look. We objectify people based on their appearance. We are more than just our appearance. We are more than, than how we look. We are more than than these these physical these physical husks that we reside within there is more to me than flesh and blood there is more to you than flesh and blood i think it would go a long way i think we I, I think it would go a long way for us if we could begin Seeing, see, not even just the, the, the people around us, but, but the world around us. As something, as something more. As something more than the tactile. I have a few trans friends. I've mentioned this before. I have a few trans friends. And honest to God, what I love about them is who they are on the inside. I mean, isn't that what we're taught as a, you know, never judge a book by its cover? Taught that as a kid, right? Right? You don't just date the pretty ones. You don't just date the handsome ones. What, what's going on on the inside matters too. Perhaps matters most person's character you can't touch a person's character you can't see just with your eyes a person's character you may see it in how they act but character is an internal thing dreams are internal kindness is internal love is internal these attributes of a person are well i would argue more important than, than the image 
we perceive with our, with our eyes or, or, or the being we can touch with our hands. I like, I really do, am, I'm an admirer of Francis. And, and I know, I can't imagine, no, I don't know anything. I can't imagine uh, how complicated it is for him, you know, trying to guide a 2,000-year-old a organization uh, it, during a season of great um, exponential, it seems, and exponential change. Can't imagine what it's like for him. I wish this document had paid a little more attention to as grateful as I am for some of the things that it says in particular about how being gay isn't a crime and that it's unacceptable to, uh, it's contrary to the human dignity to imprison or abuse people because of their sexual orientation. Uh, I wish, I wish this document had addressed the beauty within the people they were talking about, the trans people. Uh, I, I wish it had, it had addressed the image of God that is, that is within them and not just, not just how they appeared, how they, how, how they appear at birth. So for the person who asked me that question, I hope, I hope that provides some, something to think about, right? Amen. Uh, Kelly is here. Gwei Rev at all. Good to see you, Kelly. Thanks for being here. Mr. Bob says those are being, those people are being hurt. And they are being hurt continually, even if the damage is only a matter of their own imagination. Most of the time, there is something real, and it's being ignored. Hmm. <sighs> yeah. Okay, let me quickly look for some prayer requests here, folks. Um, Crispy Graham says, I've gone to dozens of schools and met more than a few teachers who would pull a gun on an annoying student if they had one. Yeah, I, I heard about, was it Tennessee's trying to, trying to put guns in school? It's, it's sort of making the news that they're, they were introducing legislation to, to provide. There's a comedian I, I found on, on YouTube. Uh, she's a teacher and she's a comedian on the side. Uh, she's a teacher. She said, you know, if you ever give me a gun, I'm going to rob a Staples. That's the first thing she's going to do with that gun. And she's going to rob a Staples to get the supplies she needs to be a decent teacher. She was being funny about it. And she is quite funny. But it's kind of a... She might. <laughs> you know, like, it's a serious enough statement that... It actually, there's there's some sense to it. I guess that's why... That's what good humor is, right? Seth says, I go to the bathroom, do my business, wash my hands and leave. That's it. Where do some people get these ideas that I'm a predator? Um, probably projection. And, and let's be fair. Okay. So again, we go through a lot of this training here in the church. We go through a lot of training in the church uh, when it comes to, we call this thing called Safer Church, which is a program our insurance company initiated to help us uh, ensure that we are providing a safe, a safer space, physical space, even, even virtual one of the things they've told us, we were, I remember we were talking, we were having a conversation about, um, about background checks and vulnerability checks, criminal background checks. And the person doing the training literally said, these things aren't worth the paper they're printed on because a predator, 
like a, most predators will have um, committed a crime anywhere between 75 and 150 times before they're ever caught. And that doesn't show up on the report. And accusations don't show up on the report. Only convictions show up on the report. And many times accusations take a long time to be, to, to be processed. And they're not, they don't all end in convictions. Predators are going to be predators. Period. Right? So someone who is going to uh, someone who is going to prey on women is going to find a way to do it. Someone who's going to prey on children is going to find a way to do it. Someone who's going to prey on seniors is going to find a way to do it. Someone who is preying on the vulnerable will find a way to do it. Mic drop. Full stop. That's it. So when we hear, you know, and I think there was a case in the U.S. just recently of of somebody going into a women's bathroom claiming to be trans. They're not trans. They're a predator. It's not the same thing. That person is using a particular, um, a particular thing, right? They're, they're, They're abusing a particular thing that's happening in our society in order to prey on the vulnerable. They're going to find a way to do it. They just happen to use the, they just happen to say, oh, I'm trans and that's why I'm allowed to be in there. But my bet will be once this, you know, once the news comes out, once everything breaks on this, you're going to find this person's never, never gone to a doctor, never sought treatment, never sat with a, with a counselor, never sat with a psychiatrist or a psychologist, never talked to a doctor, my guess will be you're going to find out that this person has just simply said, well, I, I've decided I'm going to wear women's clothes so I can go into the women's bathroom. And that's not the same. Where do these people get the idea that trans people are predators? Projection. Predators... It's an awful way of saying it, and forgive me, but predators are going to find a way to eat. They're going to find a way to get at their prey. If there were no trans people in this world, that person who got arrested in that bathroom would have found another way to prey on their victims. Just wouldn't have been in the bathroom. Anyhow, don't, yeah, I, I mean, I get, I'm sorry you go through that, Seth. I'm sorry you go through that. Aria says, Paul says in heaven there will be no genders. Why would gender matter if God in heaven, uh, and if God, if God in heaven, that there are no genders, let people be who they say they are. Right. Yeah. Let people be their authentic self. Let people be their authentic self. And, and again, this isn't a whim, right? It, it's like, oh, today I want to wear a dress. It's not how it works. It's not just some flippant decision that someone makes. It's something that they wrestle with. And they don't just wrestle with it alone. It's something that they wrestle with, with a team and of, of people around them family, friends, people who support them, allies, medical professionals. It's not a decision that, you know, I'm I'm just waking up today and, you know, what's the Shania Twain, you know, we were talking about Northern Ontario, Shania Twain, uh, man, I I feel like a, was it man, I feel like a woman, something like that. It's not like I'm going to wake up tomorrow and go, ah, you know what? Yeah, now I get that song. It's, it's really complicated and it's, it's really a lot of hard work, exhaustive work. And it's not something you do on your own. It's not something you do alone. You do it with people, others around you.
Uh, one punch says, I'd like to discuss sane persons choosing to die with dignity and have the opportunity to say goodbye to their loved ones, Reverend Ed. Dying in the U.S. hospital in pain sounds like insanity. I would agree with you. It's okay. You know, it is, I, I'm in favor of medical assistance in dying. I've, I've spent too, many, too much time with people who've suffered, who've suffered needlessly. So I, I, I'm, a, I'm an ally. I'm a proponent of medical assistance in dying. But I'm not a proponent of medical assistance in alleviating res- governmental social responsibility. Um, so chronic illness, uh, a chronic illness, uh, a terminal illness. Yeah, no, I, I see it. Um, I, I, I agree with Maid. And in the same breath, without medical assistance in dying, let's just, you know, there's no, let's imagine there's, imagine there's no medical assistance in dying. I'm never going to judge somebody for choosing to take their life. I'm not in their shoes. I'm not walking their path. I, I don't know what it's like. And even if they were able to tell me, I, I still can't feel it. So I'm never going to judge someone for choosing to, to do that. Um, I'm never going to judge someone for choosing to do that. I'm never going to condemn them for doing that. I will pray with them. I will pray for them. I will hold their hand and I will love them. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, One Punch. Uh, Steve says, it's sad how a rare and personal condition like gender dysphoria has been politicized so much. Oh, I'm with you there, man. Yeah. Uh, Vicky says, I've never known a trans person and wish I did. There's so much I don't know or understand. So I try very hard not to make blanket statements. I will admit to being terribly confused. Vicky, I don't know if you know this, but you are in the presence of several trans people in this community, all of whom are freaking lovely people, right? In this group right here with us, there's a bunch of really lovely and loving trans people, people of faith, of, of different faiths, right here with you and I, and they're amazing. And they have made my life better, and their presence here makes our lives better. Yeah. Michael says, we are created in the image of God, and scripture says God is spirit. Yeah, but we really do seem to, we really see, do seem to, we got a death grip on this idea of, of the physical body. <laughs> David says, I'm just going to come out, I'm just going to come right out and say it. You guys are the best and God bless you. Thank you, David. Zero Motivation says, my kids know who they are in their heart. I know that these decisions are not made flippantly or lightly. We have to trust them. In some ways, it is a form of body dysmorphia. It is real. It is absolutely real. Yeah. Sabrina says, sympathy to everyone in the chat who is trans for all that you have to go through to be who you are. Amen. Omar says, if we were created in the image of God and we are sinners, then we were created by a sinful God. Logic 101. Bill Burr says something along those lines. He's a little funnier about it, but I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, Captain says, public bathrooms honestly need reforms in general. They're not exactly privacy focused and even accounting for stalls. Some urinals don't have privacy walls and are just out in the open. Yeah. I was in a uh, a grocery, no, a grocery, yeah, a grocery store last week. And literally with the, the urinal was just a one big wall mounted urinal with a, with a trench felt kind of old school. Yeah. 
Mama Sita said we're spirit created in the image of God. Yeah. Cherry Ann says, even if we don't accept that, I agree we should. It costs nothing to mind our business. My input should have no power over someone else's body. God, that statement goes a long way, doesn't it? Right? Absolutely. Contrafax says, image of God. God is a piece of shit then. ADHD and autism. Yeah, thanks a lot for that. You know, Contrafax, you have helped me with my ADHD. Um, you and, and another person in this group, actually, have helped me with my ADHD in ways that have, oh my gosh, you've helped me let go of so much guilt and shame that, you know, I basically, I had been, I had, I had absorbed and, and uh, adopted for myself throughout the course of my life. You have helped me with that immensely. And I am seeing in so many ways, like how this is a gift. So, I mean, I get you, I, I get your frustration, but, uh, well, I, I give thanks for you. So God bless you. Thank you, brother. Um, Cheryl Alt says, prayer request, please pray for Tennessee lawmakers who are trying to pass legislation for guns for teachers. Teachers don't want them. Most parents don't either. Only Tennessee GOP. They need help. And I don't even think they want them. I think they just... Uh, you know what? I think they're chasing, who was it? Was it Bo the other day talking about that Arizona situation said, this is what it looks like when the dog catches the car. I, I, I think they're just, they're, they're trying to catch the car and they're going to regret it when they catch it. They're, 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 at, they're up to the wrong thing. They're chase they're, 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 they're chasing the wrong dream, right? They're, 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 they're running at the wrong f dragon and they're going to regret it when they get there. Because it's all going to come back to bite them. Because this isn't what they're supposed to be doing. I mean, life is strange that way. You know, life is really strange that way. When you, when you live according to your purpose, when you do the work that you're actually supposed to do, I, I've just seen it, and, and this is just experiential, right? So anecdotal. So take it with a grain of salt. But when I'm doing the things that I'm supposed to be doing, those things turn out really well. They really do. And the consequences of them, there might be some consequences to it, but it's not like a cascading event of like a Pandora's box kind of consequence. Sure, you do the right thing. You may have to pay for doing the right thing. Absolutely. Did a talk on that this week. You guys were there. But there's, it's not a Pandora's box of things that I now have to go and resolve. You do the right thing. The right thing is done. It's not like now I'm, I'm going around putting out fires because of that thing that I did. But when you don't do the right thing, when you're doing the thing that, that you aren't supposed to be doing, when you're doing the thing that you don't have to be involved in, then it does seem like you've opened Pandora's box and now you're going to be going around putting out these fires. Like you've, you've stirred something up that you shouldn't have touched. That's what, you're, that's what I'm seeing. That's, I'm seeing that in Arizona. I'm seeing that in Alabama. I'm seeing that in, 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 in Kansas. They just tried to pass something, but the, the governor vetoed it. And, and, and with this stuff in, in Tennessee, that's... Opening a Pandora's box and you are going to have to... You're going to have to scramble putting out the fires that your decision ultimately caused. Ugh. Cheryl, I hope you're doing well. Please give our best to Wolfgang and Justin and your whole family. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you know, I mentioned in the, I mentioned the, the, the Vatican document. One, it, it doesn't just talk about um, transgender treatment. It also talks about um, surrogacy talks about surrogacy and it, it, it says that surrogacy uh, in itself is, you know, it's bad, right? It's, it's, it's bad that it's, it's not part of God's plan. And 
I don't agree with it, but I can see their point. And, um, you know, the point is, well, sometimes the surrogates end up being women who are desperate. And they shouldn't be used like this. It's, it's, they shouldn't be used like this. Like think about a third world, you know, a, a third world person being used to, to, to carry a baby. Basically, you know, forced birth kind of situation. And maybe they're getting paid for it. But, but there are situations where surrogacy is really quite beautiful. You know, it doesn't all, it's not always about somebody being, somebody being abused or somebody being uh, forced into a situation because of their particular situation. Uh, it's not always, there's not always a power dynamic at play that a person feels threatened or, or this is the, you know, it's, it's a matter of their desperation and that's why they're involved. When I was reading about this, again, I don't agree with a blank, the blanket statement about surrogacy that the, that the document offers. But I thought, well, I thought the first thing was, how can they make such a blanket statement? That's like, wow, that is so, it's a huge thing to say. It's a massive label to stick on, on something that's provided a lot of people a great amount of joy. It also talked about the dignity of the child and that a child has the right to, anyway. But I thought, what if instead of the document offering blanket condemnations for certain things, you know, big, huge, generalized condemnations for, for something like surrogacy, what if the document instead asked the reader to think about it? What if the document asked the reader to question their understanding of surrogacy, asked society to question its use of, of treatments, use of, of things like surrogacy, so that the document, rather than saying, this is the you know, this is your moral line, instead said, we'd really like you to consider a few things in regards to these, to these treatments, in regard to these processes, in regard to these, um, to these opportunities, in regards to these um, current accepted societal norms. We'd, we'd really like you to ask some questions about these things. These are some of the, these are some of the questions. These are some of the things that we find challenging. These are some of the things that we find curious. These are some of the things we find troubling. So instead of telling us, this is, this is the way it is, you know, stamped, signed God, said, society, we want you to, we want you to think we want you to ask some questions. We want you to give some thought to these, give some thought to this based on these concerns we have. I just think it would go so much further, right? I, I think it would go so much further. Obviously, there wouldn't be blanket um, understanding and, and acceptance that we wouldn't all come to the same conclusions. And we wouldn't all come to the same decisions. But maybe that's not as important as we all had real, authentic, sincere, deep uh, thoughts and conversations about these things. So we're making informed decisions, not just things that we're, again, not, you know, off the cuff, not on a whim, not... Right? But, but we've given deep consideration, some critical thinking. We've allowed ourselves to, to ask some deep questions and to, to, to be comfortable with the answers that we've come to. Or to be comfortable with the confusion and, and the unknown. 
we obviously wouldn't have any control over people. We'd be giving up control, right? We'd be giving up the, the stamp of God. But we might be helping to make the world a real, truly better place, right? And I mean, and it's not just a matter of saying, oh, we just give this some thought over the, over the supper table or give this some thought as you go to bed tonight, but say, you know, hey, to the parishes, we want you to have these discussions as a group. Get together and talk about it. Invite your community members in to talk about it, to share their experiences, to share their concerns. What if like these kinds of edicts, these kinds of documents were, were catalysts for conversation? Again, instead of just a blanket statement stamped by God. I really, you know, I don't know if this is just as I get older or if it's because I'm doing these, having these conversations with y'all, but I'm loving the what if question. I really am. I am finding it really liberating and... uh and rewarding. What if? What if? What if? What if? <sighs> Seth says, I'm trans male and I get so confused as to which bathroom I'm allowed to use without ending up like next Benedict. <sighs> God bless you, Seth. Thank you for everything that you share with us. Kara says, I hate to admit I can relate with people who choose maid. Seven years to get in BC housing, uh, but pipes flood constantly, quality of life issues like mold, unsafe neighbors, and I suffer illness and today rent went up. God bless you, Kara. God bless you, Kara. John Didier, thank you very much for your generosity. Thank you again for your generosity. Zero Motivation says, RE that trans statement. Frack that. Frack. That's Battlestar Galactica. Right. Had to check my, had to go through my list of, uh, of swear words in sci-fi. Let's see. Hani says, I loved being pregnant and having babies, but didn't want the responsibility for more than two. I once considered if surrogacy would be a way of paying the bills. Excuse me, folks. I had a hangnail. Um, Ellis says, maybe God's plan is for us to figure out how to do surrogacy. I'd be a surrogate uh, for my family if I were asked and not prone to life-threatening complications. Yeah. Terry says, it's so nice to listen to someone with common sense. Thanks, Reverend Ed. I think my parents would be surprised anybody would ever say that about me, but thank you, Terry. God bless you. Um, Zero Motivation says the church releasing a huge blanket statement proclaiming their power over our mortal or our morality. That's just a normal church power trip. And yeah, I'm not going to disagree with you. Um, I just, I think, again, like you read the document, it's kind of infuriating the blanket state. The blanket statements are kind of infuriating but they would be really important. They, they could be really important questions for us to consider. So if we said, hey, listen, we want you to ask yourself about people being created in the image of God. What does it mean for a person to be created in the image of God? What does it mean for a person to, to transition from one gender to another? And, and how does that speak about the image of God? It might open the door for incredible, beautiful theological experimentation 
And yeah, I, I know that sounds like a crazy word to use when it comes to theology, but it is theology is about figuring things out. This is what I think God looks like. And does the evidence sort of help me figure it? Does the evidence point to that? Or does the evidence point me somewhere else? Oh, it points somewhere else. Well, lovely thought, but it obviously doesn't hold water or it, maybe it does. And let's go deeper into it. But we could, we could at, by asking questions, as opposed to a these massive blanket statements by asking these questions again that surrogacy question that surrogacy statement led me to ask the question because no that makes sense it's not okay for for the poor for a, a woman who is who is who is trying to pay the bills right trying to get by trying to pay for for her children to live it's not okay for there to be a power dynamic between her and someone who really wants to have a kid and 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 wants wants to pay her in order to do it is she you know because then you can ask is she really doing this is this a free will kind of thing or is she being forced into it is this is this a a subtle form of co coercion not necessarily by the family who's seeking her assistance but by the society that she exists within to me that that opens up wonderful conversation and discussion it opens up it opens up an opportunity to be well to be more present uh, to be more truly aware of what it is that that we're supporting like that you can fully say no no yeah i mm, i'm definitely on board with this or i have my reservations this this question this has helped me come to a place where I have reservations. Maybe surrogacy is something that, well, it, it maybe it should be kept within a family, right? Uh, maybe, I don't know, whatever. I, I, I'm not going to get into too deep because it'll drive me nuts for the rest of the night. But you get what I'm saying. Rather than saying surrogacy bad, stamp. Hey, there's, we have some reservations we'd like you to consider. We'd like you to give some thought about this. Trans, you know, trans treatment, bad, stamp. Hey, what does it mean for a person to be created in the image of God? That's, that's a wonderful question. What does it mean for you? What does it mean? Does it, does it mean that we're playing God if we, tr if we help someone transition, medically help someone transition from, from one gender to the other? Does that mean we're spitting in the face of God? Does that mean that we're, 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 we're disrespecting uh, the, that this person was created in the image of God before? Or does it mean something else? Right? Does it mean we're actually embracing uh, the image of God that, that exists within the person by helping them transition to become that, that person that they, they, they feel they are on the inside? Someday, when I rule the world, right? <laughs> Someday I'll fix everything. If I if I could just rule the world for one day, I'll be a dictator for one day, and I'll take care of all this. I'm 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 teasing. I'm being absolutely facetious. Um, let's see here. Cherry Ann, thank you. God bless you for your generosity. Awen and Hammer, Awen and Hammer, sandwiches for students and a nose boop for Dingo. Yeah, Dingo's not here tonight, but I'll I'll give him a nose boop, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, let's see. Qui the Schwomo says. Um, weird prayer request. I haven't dated for a long time. Lost a few loved ones before that and just, and I just quit drinking and I want to be more present in everything. I know I've missed a lot already. Well, we'll pray for you, Kui. We'll pray for dating and for life. And that's not a weird prayer request. We get that from time to time. You know, Omar says there's no shortages of what ifs. No, what ifs are great. What ifs are great. I think. I think what ifs are great. Um, 
Kelly says, my favorite swear word in sci-fi, poodoo. What one's that from? What is that from? Um, Ad says, I think public bathrooms should be private and unisex, so no discrimination. It just requires a lot of public bathrooms, right? It just requires a lot of public bathrooms. Uh, it, it, more construction, more, they'd become more expensive. But that's a solution. That's a possible solution. Right? Um, anyway, Cherry Ann says, has anyone seen 8 Mick tonight? If not, I hope she is, I hope she is having a great time somewhere. <laughs> I hope she's having a great time somewhere. Yeah, me too. Uh, Davini says, Frack from Battlestar, Galac Galac Battlestar Galactica and Gorum from Firefly. Oh, yeah, that's right. Our classics I used to use a lot when trying to wean myself off of swearing, LOL. Yeah. Uh, Deb Denny says, that's called The Dark Night of the Soul, a true existential crisis of the human mind, soul, and body. Ooh, those are, those are challenging times. Yeah, you go through a dark night of the soul. Those are challenging times. Contrafax says, Reverend Ed, I suspect your parents are very surprised and proud of you. I think they are. Yeah. Yeah. Cherry Ann says, blanket statements are often futile. The world and people are full of complexity. Yeah, we are... Like the spectrums that we exist upon are many and varied. And I don't think there's, I don't think you can group all that many people together in one group. This is exactly who these people are. Yeah. Um, Random Englander says, think what you will of this, but Joseph sounds a lot like a surrogate father to me. I can see where you're coming from. Yep. Uh, Steve says commercial surrogacy is illegal in Australia. So my nephew went to Canada to have his baby. I think it's fair for the surrogate to be compensated for their, um, for their generosity. I agree, but I can completely understand why you don't want to commercialize that. Right. I can completely understand why you don't want to commercialize that. Alice says, I prefer to make statements with my blankets to blanket statements. As a rule, I do have an art quilt or two which are saying a lot with the blanket. There you go. Uh, you people. <laughs> uh, Kevin says, I have a what if. What if I'm dreaming and all of you are my dream or vice versa? You're dreaming and I'm in all of your dreams. Yeah. What if? Wouldn't this still be a great dream, right? Zero Motivation says celibacy should be a personal decision, not dictated by religion or employment. Putting a cork in it uh, as it is can lead to bad outcomes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, you know, well, anyway, we won't get into all of that, but you're right, I'm, I'm with you. Um... Let's, uh, let's go to prayer. Uh, oh, Aria says, prayer request, running a charity game next week for Extra Life Prayers for a good turnout. It benefits Children's Miracle Network, a, ch a children cancer charity. Uh, let's see here. So, Aria... And a charity game. We'll be praying for you. Uh, Brina says the church turns people away from God with the lie that he will not accept them for whom they are. <sighs> it's, it's such a big deal. You know, Jesus promises freedom 
and the church, I think in many ways have, uh, well, we've simply said, yes, for the freedom you experience in Jesus Christ, you must be subjugated to us. Allison says, prayer request, dad has new developments with nerve pain in his legs. Please let it be healed and he may get some relief. Uh, may his heart appointment on Monday be well. So Allison's dad. We will be praying for your dad. Uh, Colibly Flyer says, Reverend Ed, were you able to get my email on prayer beads? Thank you in advance. Juan in Seattle. Yeah, I, th I sent Juan, I sent your prayer beads out. Um, I'll send another set. I'm going to write that down. Okay. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> Contrafax says, announcement. Eight Mick is fine. She told me earlier this week she would not be in today. Thank you for letting us know. Um, da, 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 da. Emily says, I'd rather have you as a dictator than that other guy. Well, I'll tell you, I've been, I've found out a really interesting, crazy fact um, that I'm trying to figure out how I can put it into a video about what the founding fathers originally wanted. Did you know of the 13 colonies, seven of them had, well, they, they had a, a state church. Okay, they had a, a state, official state church. It was the Church of Canada, a church of, uh, church of England was the official state, was the official church of most of the, of seven of those colonies. And that didn't mean you couldn't be Baptist or the other religions, but what it meant was every time one of those other churches got together, the Church of England got a cut of the tithings. And if you wanted to get married, you had to get married at the Church of England. And if you wanted to have a funeral, you had to have a funeral at the Church of England. And if you wanted to have like all that kind of, it was it was a huge money grab for the Church of England. <laughs> they were the state. They were the state-sponsored church. These colonies, well, the Church of England is our church, and here it is. And again, you were allowed to have other worship services, so long as you paid the Church of England. Now, if that's the case, when those founding fathers came along and said that we shall have no, you know, no state church. It's because they had the experience from the Church of England in those colonies. They knew what a state-sponsored church would do. They, they knew that there was... They, so, I'm trying to figure out a way of fitting that in. Anyhow, we'll figure it out some way, maybe. Sometimes, I, you know, you, you have that Cliff Clavin moment where you find that information. You're like, oh, I can use this. And... Uh, I find it can be diff it can be dangerous forcing it into something because you may up end up doing a talk on something that it just it just doesn't work it doesn't fit and it's it's just your ego. Anyhow, uh, with all that being said, yeah, you know, I'll I'll come down and 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 lead Virginia. Was it Virginia and Georgia and uh, Virginia and Georgia? I think New York. Uh, I can't remember which ones it was, but yeah, it was a few, like it was seven of the good ones, right? The Church of England, let's, just let me know. I'll come down. I'll take over. I'll take over the church in those, in those states now. And just like the, just like the fathers of the, of the, who founded those colonies always wanted. We might as well go, don't just go back to the country, you know, the start of the country, go back to when the colonies were founded. I'll come down and take care of that for you. Anyhow. Uh, Yeah. Uh, Donna, prayer request. Iran has launched an attack on Israel. Prayers for the region. We'll be praying for them. Hmm. Marie says, hi guys. Thank you for all the prayers on Wednesday. It really helped. I'm really glad. Thank you, Marie. Thanks for sharing that with us. Steve says, a benevolent, a benevolent dictator is an elusive beast. Yeah, it's a unicorn. It is an absolute unicorn. Um, 
Kui says, I really liked how you pointed out that character isn't our physical bodies. I really wish I could show my true character to some someone in five minutes, but I really like what Luke says in 9, 23, and 24. A prayer request from Jennifer. The pharmacy is supposed to have my Muranjo uh, for my diabetes Monday. I have been without it for over two months. Please pray it's there. Yeah. Vicky says, prayer request for understanding and my family. Hmm. Uh, Davini says, Reverend Ed, I understand your concerns about IVF since you want what ifs. What if... IVF was legal on the condition that you can't do it for pay. Yeah. Like, again, I think that would, that would solve a lot of issues. The problem, you know, anyway, I don't think it's, I, I wish it was as simple as just going, oh, now, let's do it this way. Um, but I mean, we're walking in unprecedented times. We have the ability to do things that nobody's ever had the ability to do before. And in some ways, I think technology is outpacing our ability to understand and our ability to truly fathom what it is that's going on. That's not to say we we we, sh we should stop and just go back to doing things the way they did them in the 50s. It's, it's to say it's going to require us talking. It's going to require us letting people be who they are. It's going to require us to let people do things that we might not agree with, right? And, and coming up with under, you know, coming up with with lines that everybody can agree on, right? Coming up with 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 edges that everybody can agree on. Anyway, uh, I, I love these kinds of conversations, folks. I really, I genuinely do. I love having these kinds of conversations. They're not easy conversations. I'm not going to have an answer for you. You're not going to have an answer for me, I suspect. Uh, well, that's actually, some of you are pretty friggin' brilliant. Um, but yeah, um, they're important for us to have. And it's important for us to look at things and say, you know what? It might not be the, it might not be the popular question, but it's, it's needed. Um, Seth says, I blame Ed for the earworm. No, no, no. You don't get to blame me for ear earworms. You are the, of the, are the grand poobah of earworms. You don't get to blame me for them because I know like within the next three seconds, you're going to drop a title to a song that I'm going to be singing for the rest of the night while I'm trying to figure out my sermon for the morning. So no, 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 no. You don't get to blame me for earworms there. <sighs> that was <laughs> maybe a little disproportionate. <laughs> Uh, Steve says, have to head off now. Love to you all. Catch you soon. God bless you. Mimi, requested prayer beads on January 28th. You responded. I still haven't received them. Okay. I'll... Folks, if you've requested prayer beads and you haven't received them yet, send me a message. I have gotten some people who've, um, Hani, for example, I think she got the envelope and nothing in it. Um, so it's not going to be uncommon that maybe you didn't, you didn't get them. So, yeah. Um... Uh, Benji says, Shalom. I hope all are well. Sorry to reach out like this, but I've tried email. I have 40 prayer bead ropes for you. Uh, is there a church address? Yes. And I do have your email. I can't believe I didn't respond to it. Give me a, give me a couple of days. I'll get a, an address out to you. If you want something right now, go to the church's website. I think the church's website's in the description of this video. St. Margaret of Scotland in Halifax. You could Google it. And the address is right there. Benji, thank you so much for your generosity. I'm so sorry that I didn't get, get didn't get to the address. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, we're now, apparently people are talking about Red Dwarf. Okay. Ugh. <sighs> 
Okay, folks. Let's, uh, let's pray. Let's pray. Tonight we pray for Bernt and Solveig. We pray for Sarah and Emmanuel. We pray for Cheryl and for Wolfgang and for Justin and for his family. We pray for all the unspoken prayers out there. We pray for all the unseen healers amongst us. We pray for peace in our world. We pray for Ukraine and Russia, for Syria, for the West Bank, for Gaza, for Israel, for Iran, for Yemen. And we pray especially tonight we pray especially tonight for what's transpiring in the Middle East. For the one runaway train that it seems to be becoming. We pray for cool, calm, discerning minds. We pray for leaders who are seeking peace as opposed to their understanding of victory. pray for Amy from the Bible study, and we pray for Joanna and Brian from our Bible study. We pray for Alexa Nicholas, Jeanette McCurdy, Amanda Bynes, for all child actors who have, whose skills and talent and for their childhoods that have been exploited in the name of entertainment. We pray for people impacted by the stabbings in Sydney, Australia. For all those who, who are mourning tonight. For all those who are traumatized. We pray for all who give themselves to care for others. We pray for David and his upcoming social assistance meeting. And we pray that everything will go well that he'll receive a positive response and that he'll, he'll encounter a supportive, friendly employee, associate. We pray for Fiona, for her sadness and for her pain. We pray for the father of a family who died in a tragic car accident. We pray for the trans rapper who was recently, recently killed. We pray for our emotional and mental and spiritual health. We pray for Constantine in Uzbekistan. We pray for James's second cousin's IEP coming up. We pray for Sue and for the illness she suffered over these last eight days. We pray for the homeless in our communities. We pray for ourselves that we might be willing to be of assistance, given the courage and the capability to do so. We pray for Babe and for her brother who are in hospice. We pray for a world desperate for security. And we pray for people's freedoms and rights. We pray for trust amongst us all, compassion, dignity, mercy, and kindness. We pray for zero motivation and for all that they're going through as they're, as a student. We pray for Olivia. May your presence always be with her. We pray for everyone, past, present, and future, who, who, are, who have suffered or are suffering with Parkinson's disease. We pray for all those people who are suffering chronic illnesses, terminal diseases with terminal diagnosis. We pray for them. We pray for their families as 
as they are forced to make difficult decisions that no one would ever want to have to make. We pray for the family of the Milwaukee woman who was dismembered. Be with them in this time of grief. Be present to them in a way that is visible and overwhelming. We pray for Yeharman's church as they prepare to plant their garden. May it be so abundant that they fill their neighbors' cupboards with delicious, nutritious food. We pray for Dre and for the Goliath they face. We pray for their victory over this giant. We pray for their safety. And we pray that their victory we glorify you so that Dre's faith would be affirmed and validated and that it would grow. We pray for all the lost souls who commit random acts of violence. We pray for Sherry who's suffering from COVID, and we pray for her husband, Walt, now Pig Pig. We pray for Trent, who's suffering the loss of his puppy. Rest eternal, grant unto it, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. We pray for Miss Dragon's husband, who's going in for a CT. We pray for Maisie Rose, as she undertakes a position of huge responsibility to speak to power, to implore those of authority to do more to assist the women of Scotland. We pray for Cui and for their dating life. We pray for them as they search for the path forward. We pray that their life would be filled with joy laughter and an abundance of love we pray for aria and for the charity game that they're participating in this week that they're taking care of this week we pray that this game would 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 be profitable and would be would would help them do amazing things for for the charity that they are supporting. We pray for Allison's dad, for his upcoming appointments and for the nerve pain he's experiencing in his in his legs. We pray that Jennifer's medication would be available to her ASAP. We pray that Jennifer's medication would be available to her yesterday. We pray for Vicky for her whole family. We pray for their wisdom, for their understanding, for their love. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And you shall find your rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For thou hast redeemed me, thou God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Before the ending of the day, 
creator of the world, we pray, that with thy wonted favor thou wouldst be our guard and keeper now. From all ill dreams defend our eyes from nightly fears and fantasies. Tread underfoot our ghostly foe, that no pollution we may know. O Father, that we ask be done through Jesus Christ, thine only Son, who with the Holy Ghost in thee doth live and reign eternally. Amen. Keep us as the apple of an eye. Hide us under the shadow of thy wings. Preserve us, O Lord, waking, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Preserve us, O Lord, waking, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Blessed art thou, Lord God of our ancestors, to be praised and glorified above all forever. Let us bless the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Let us praise him and magnify him forever. Blessed art thou, O Lord, in the firmament of heaven, to be praised and glorified above all forever. The Almighty and most merciful Lord, guard us, give us his blessing. Amen. Wilt thou not turn again and quicken us, that thy people may rejoice in thee? O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this night without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come unto thee. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord. And by thy great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thine only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Look down, O Lord, from thy heavenly throne and illuminate the darkness of this night with thy celestial brightness. And from the sons of light, banish the deeds of darkness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the silent hours of this night so that we, who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world, may repose upon thy eternal changelessness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, it is night. The night is for stillness. Let us be still in the presence of God. It is night after a long day. What has been done has been done. What has not been done has not been done. Let it be. The night is dark. Let our fears of the darkness of the world and of our own lives rest in you. The night is quiet. Let the quietness of your peace enfold us, all dear to us, and all who have no peace. The night heralds the dawn. Let us look expectantly to a new day, new joys, new possibilities. In your name we pray. Amen. 
we will lay us down in peace and take our rest. For it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, bless and preserve us all. Amen. Oh, I don't know. I think I like this microphone. It lets me, I get to lounge back here and sort of relax and just bring the mic up. It's kind of cool. Uh, tell me what you think. If, if it's, I'm not sure if it's getting in the way or, or whatnot. I guess you can't necessarily see the gloriousness of this beard uh, all that well, but yeah, some things just have to be, you have to be willing to sacrifice some things. Um, God bless you all. In this time of turmoil, uh, and and what appears to be perpetual crises, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. May the joy of the Lord be always with you. May your eyes and your hearts and your ears be open to the needs of this world. But may you also rest. Find rest for yourselves. We can't heal the world if we're doing this 24-7. We can't heal the world if we are carrying the burdens of the world nonstop. It's not uncommon for y'all to tell me that I need to take care of myself. Well, you need to take care of yourself too. Especially right now. Because the world tomorrow is going to need you more than it needed you yesterday. God bless you all. I love you all. I'm amazed by you all. I am so grateful that you are all in my life. Numultus. <laughs>